I have a lot of people asking me, Tom, how do I decide how long I stay in a place? And when do I decide it's time to go somewhere else? If you're living like a digital nomad, you know, you have a very luxurious and privileged lifestyle. You get to decide where you are. And some people take that quite far and they uh, move around every two or three weeks or every month to a new place because they want to see the entire world. So how do I decide what length of time I want to spend somewhere? One of my pet peeves is with people who, when you tell them where you're going, uh, answer, oh yeah, that city, Santiago de Chile, or Johannesburg. I hated that city. And very often that comes not from people who've lived there for five years, if they did, you know, might be worth listening to them, but from people who were there for about a week on holiday. Um, I think, frankly, that's insane. Uh, in fact, if I go on holiday somewhere for a week, I really feel like time is going by quicker than my experience can catch up with it, right? I am not really living. I just kind of find myself hectically walking around all day, wondering where the time has gone for seven days, and then I have to go back. And then if I'm lucky, I've made some pictures that actually prove I was there because I certainly don't feel like it. Um, and once you're back, even a week later, it feels like kind of a dream. To me, the amount of time I need in a place in order to feel like I exist there is about three months. And I think that's a good time frame because it's enough for me to actually get bored. And I think boredom is actually an incredibly important source of information about what a particular city is like to you. And if you're bored in a city, you really know what it is like to live there. If you're bored and you're just doing the same old thing, going to the same place for your lunch or you're walking down the same street to the gym, um, I think that's the point when you start realizing what the place means for your life and where you can place it, where it stops being a series of highlights and becomes something actually valuable. And I think that's one of the risks of this digital nomad lifestyle is that it can be tempting to view your life as this series of highlights. And I think as a long-term goal, that's really not sustainable. That works if you're on holiday. Um, but living like that, uh, you know, temple fatigue is a thing amongst backpackers, but I think life fatigue can be a thing among digital nomads. If you're just jet-setting around the globe, new places every month, um, not really landing anywhere, not really experiencing anything anymore, just this constant succession of images passing you by, it doesn't work. And I think you should be careful of it. So yeah, three months I think is, uh, is a good amount of time to spend somewhere. And please stop saying, I hated that city. Like, we don't do that to people, right? Or we try not to. Uh, if someone introduces themselves, we don't immediately go, oh yeah, I know two things about you. You seem like an asshole. I mean, we might think that, but we don't actually say it, do we? We, we try and give them a chance. So give these places that have uh, millions of people in them a chance as well. They are much more diverse than you think they are. They have much more experience in them than you think they do. When you say things like that, you're not really engaging in a dialogue with the city. You are just trying to extract as much fun as you can out of it uh, for a limited amount of time. And if that fun doesn't live up to your expectation, you, you hate the city. Uh, I don't think that's a productive attitude towards being somewhere, let alone if you're trying to be a digital nomad, um, which to me also means that you have some responsibility for the place you are in. And, you know, you're already kind of living on a cheat code by, you know, living in places that are a lot cheaper than the currency in which we make our money. So I think not being too extractive about your experience in these cities is very important. So yeah, that's my two cents. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments.